is kind of like Usenet, but with ads and a moderation system called Flashdot. I did not invent Flashdot. Some people say I did. They are wrong, and that is corporate cyber biography stuff. More accurately, I'm here because I wrote this book. It is called Point and Click Linux. How many of you people here are like programmers and sysadmins and stuff like that? So, okay, so basically, most of the people in this room are smart. I, I, I feel for you. I, I pity you. I love you. I respect you. But most of us are not smart like you. We don't really know how or want to know how to do something like type star dot slash backslash number sign ch mod and a bunch of numbers and then some more stuff to like listen to an mp3 we'd like to know that stuff if we had nothing else to do but i hate to tell you we have other things on our minds i wrote this book for a guy named craig hoffman um, partially craig is an md he's an internist in Bradenton, Florida, where I live, and he has so far been successful in keeping me alive and my diabetes under control without excessive medication. We do not like Craig to have to spend a lot of time thinking about his computer. We like Craig on the internet learning about the latest medical advances. We want him being a doctor. We want him to use his computer as a tool. We want to make that computer as easy as possible for him to use. In the genesis of this book, the origin started in 1997 on the GNOME developer's list. I had an extensive email conversation with a person who, with whom, well, well I'll, I'll, to disguise his real name, I'll just call him Eric Raymond. And um, um, this, this person codenamed Eric S. Raymond and I had a discussion in which he kept saying, everybody needs to learn to use VI or Emacs. You do not need a word processor. You do not need a text editor like that thing, Notes tab, that you say you like so much in Windows. That you should use VI, because everybody should become familiar with software. And back then, I was not smart enough to say, but Eric, you have a car, do you not? Which, yes, he did. And to ask him something like, oh, what is the spark plug gap in your car? Or, what is the model of filter in your automatic transmission? I used to fix cars. I know things like that sometimes. Eric doesn't. Most programmers, including the ones who have told me that everybody should know a lot about computers, don't know hardly anything about their cars, and yet they own them. Okay, disconnect. Meanwhile, over the years, things have happened. And um, a lot of programmers stopped scratching not only their own itches, but started scratching also other people's itches. Cousins, fathers, mothers, wives, and girlfriends. In many cases, I think it was the wives and girlfriends who were the biggest influences. In fact, sometimes it helped them get wives and girlfriends. Um, and eventually, instead of using notes tab, this thing sort of came up, and this Bluefish program is my classic personal example of free software, fast development, success. Because it started out as a piece of junk, and uh, a guy named Olivier Sussink started this as a project, and he is what um, the CIO of Continental Airlines probably was thinking about when he refers to free software and open source developers as a bunch of dope-smoking hippies in Amsterdam who you have to dig out of the hash house when you have a problem. Olivier is not a, as far as I know, a major dope sucker, but he does live in Amsterdam. Actually, he's a very serious um, guy who's getting his doctorate now. And then with help from people in nearby places to Amsterdam, like Hong Kong and New York and other local places, hey, it's the World Wide Web, it's the Internet, it's distributed development, it is on this planet, and therefore local. 
it came. And the classic one to me was a feature request that I put on developer list. I said, you know, one of the big problems with all these text editors that programmers write is that they are reviewed by reporters and writers. And the first thing that reporters and writers, who are often paid by the word, want to find is word count. And programmers do not need word count. So they don't put them there. A lot of them do need spell checker. I hate spell checker, but that's personal. So, what if I were to come up here, remember I'm reading this along here, and I were to go to document, oh look. That was on a Tuesday, I asked that by Thursday, there were three different word counts being debated. This ended up being the standard one. See down at the bottom, it came up for a second, and it works well enough. That was the consensus of the group. And so, in two days, my feature request was implemented. How many of you have ever asked a major proprietary software company to add a feature to their software? And since, of course, they relied on you, their valued customer, for their income, that took less than 24 hours, right? Okay, how long did it take? And what kind of feature was this? Okay, well, I've had feature requests that just never got answered, so you're special. Imagine trying to get something like that into, I said notes tab, which is a small shareware and or freeware Windows program it's, uh, done by a smart guy in Switzerland. What if I had asked for a specialized word count utility in notes tab, which is made by the, uh, what's the name, to do the flight simulator program? company in, in Washington, and you're, uh, what's his name's place, and you're like Horace, um, 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 Microsoft, and um, I don't think they would uh, do it because I know they've had that request. In any case, gradually things have gotten pointier and clickier, and we have now hit the point that, oh look at that, in case I try to shut it off without saving, one of those things that the old Unix guys used to tell me was really stupid. But see, for guys like me, that's good because we do forget because we're not concentrating on the computer. We're on the phone. Mm -hmm. So we gradually have gotten things to where there are six Linux commands you need to know. Does anybody know what they are? He does. He's seen the video in this book. This book has a DVD video in it. It shows you how to put the CD into the drive somewhat facetiously, but this is not a book for skilled users. I base this whole thing on six Linux commands. You might want to write these down. Point, click, cut, paste, drag, drop. Can you remember that? This is true. You can now do desktop Linux completely with those six commands. Point, click, cut, paste, drag, drop. That's all you need. You cannot administer 300 servers that way. Although, some people say web, Webmin is just about there. I wouldn't know, because I'm not one of the smart people, who uh, smart people who administer servers. I'm a writer, I'm an editor, I'm a reporter, which reminds me, everybody else takes pictures of the speaker, but I'm mostly a reporter, so I ought to take a picture of you. By the way, do feel free to interrupt. Since I work on Flashdot, I'm used to being constantly interrupted and even being told I'm a fool. I do not deny. In any case, the trick is, and a problem for new users, is that most long-time Linux users are really smart, are really skilled, came from Unix, or else started with a C64 when they were four years old or something. And you know, they are in what I call now, in my left categorization, class three computer users. I best digress and define that. What kind of computer do you have? Class one computer user says, I have a Dell. It gives you a brand name. A class two computer user says, I have a desktop, and I've got an Asus motherboard, and I've got this kind of processor, and I have this much RAM, and they give you a little bit of a parts list. A class three computer user says, 
Well, let's see. I've got about four. He said, you mean complete ones that are running right now or ones that are like kind of a little bit apart? I suspect that most of you are class three computer users and yet the vast majority of the people in the world are class one computer users. We have to make things simple for them. Again, this is not for dummies. I'm not saying these people are stupid. I'm saying they're smart people who just have other things to do. They want to pay attention to their children, to painting, to the practice of medicine, to fixing cars, to being a lawyer, whatever it is. And then we say, oh, learn Linux. And then because so many of us have learned so much, I'll admit, I can use that little command line thing too. I, I know about this little terminal window down here and you know how to click it open and do things, you know, and all that. But not many of them, and I don't care. The thing is, if you show that to most people, they're scared. Yes, maybe you think they should learn it, but I'd like to remind you that when DOS, you've heard of DOS, right? Okay. When DOS was common, most people did not use computers and found them very fearsome. And if they did use DOS, they memorized, you know, F2 and F7, which were the essential commands for WordPerfect. And that was about it. Computer use took off with the advent of graphical user interfaces. You may think they suck. You may think that in the beginning, the command line was there and it should still be there. Yes, it should for you. You are a member of an elite priesthood. However, please do not try to teach other people to use it. Not they ask. What I have done here, and this is my highly customized KDE desktop, um, I have attempted to do something that you can't do in Windows. By God, I have succeeded. I have all the programs that I use every day lined up as little applets down here. Does anybody know how to put those those little tiny mini icons there in KDE. You do? This is dumb user stuff. Huh? Say what? You can do it only to a very limited. You, ha you can only have full size icons. You can't put a lot of programs down here, a whole bunch of them, like you can in either KDE or GNOME. But this is the sort of thing that is a superiority of Linux, and in this case, KDE, that Windows does not have. I never really have to click on this thing over here in the corner. I just do these little quick things here, and I start programs. Most of my stuff is pretty internet-oriented, so we're not going to do a lot of them. Of course, there's OpenOffice. Um, a lot of people use that. But again, people concentrate on it laws when teaching new users. Well, nobody's ever been able to show me how to do it, so what we're saying is that you're smarter than everybody else, which we already agree. So, you know, we knew that. Okay? <laughs> Say what? That what is? We have not, well, you're the first person I've met, including a number of Microsoft employees, who told me that I could load a bottom panel on Windows with 10 or 20 or 30 small icons. And I, I'm talking about up to and including Martin Taylor, who works for Microsoft. But see, we're getting in the one thing that we are into there. And like I said, until he said this, and I, like I said, I've talked to lots and lots and lots of people. We have to show people easy ways to do things with Linux and applications. An obvious one in open office, of course, is the magic, and in my case, much hated file format, PDF. That we can do that, right? anybody else familiar with the approximately 62 trillion templates and other tools that are growing up around open office? 
Are you aware that they are, there are lots and lots of them? You can go to openoffice.org and freely download them. You know that, right? An awful lot of people don't. These are the sort of things that in getting a desktop user who is not a technical person comfortable with a Linux desktop that we need to remind them. They're not interested in how the file system works. They just need to know how to use the file system. Now remember, I'm looking really fumbly here because I have to look off from the side. And a lot of them really like to have those big icons. See, I have big icons too. My puppy. I miss my puppy. We don't show them day one how easy it is or work with them just to show them the minimal stuff. Oh, look, we can have a subfolder. We can have a folder. We can have a folder. Oh, look, we can move them around, if I did inadvertently. We don't show them these basic, simple, little things. So we can do it like this. Okay, let's copy it there. With this setup, this particular setup, about three hours. Why is that impressive? When did you do this and what distribution? Mandrake has, first of all, let me give you some rules about Mandrake. And I, uh, first a disclaimer, Gail and Francois are very good friends, okay? You know, really good friends, love them like brothers and all that. And, and you know, if Gail got on airplanes and my wife got on airplanes, she'd probably try to steal my work. No, I'm kidding. I mean, he calls to me. I work from home. He talks to my wife. She loves it. But neither of them will get on airplanes, which is my wife, why my wife is here and why with him in France. And us, you know, but anyway, um, don't ever use a Mandrake point zero release. Okay, do you understand that is a rule of um, using uh, Linux now? Number two, Mandrake at about eight and nine, um, they, they screwed up. You've got to go with what's best. I use Mepis in here, which is developed by you know, one of the hotbeds of computer science in this world, not in France, but Morgantown, West Virginia, by a guy I know who had done a lot of Mandrake work. And he's actually an old Next programmer and financial software guy named Warren Woodford. It's Debian with better hardware detection. He's in constant contact with Klaus Knopper. As you know, hardware detection, which is a lot of what you're talking about, has gotten way better. Um, Nopix and then some of the other Debian brethren, including, yes, the evil Linspire, which is actually not bad, just overhyped, Zandros and Nepis really have the best hardware detection right now. And you don't have to usually go looking around for other things. The stuff works. The sound works. Even about 80% of Windows modems work, which is scary. And the administration, you can administer most of this through KDE, and you can do some of these things to um, some other little custom utilities. That's not the one I wanted. But here, you see, I can just kill some uh, 
sisters and that sort of thing. See that one. And then the other one. Oops, I hit the same little icon. Very hard to do while standing off to the side. Aha. We, need, we have cat proofing here. In other words, yeah, that's what I said. Just type in star, 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 star. Um, a lot of things have gotten very easy with some of this. An example that I've heard a lot of whining about is wireless. You want to see how to start? Well, you can't start wireless right now because I don't have a wireless card in here. Mm hmm. But they do like to have wireless networks now. And there's two things, there's two ways you can go on that as far as having a billion features. Yes, teach people the basic features, keep it as simple as possible. That's rule one, just as simple as possible. Keep it all plain and quick. Set this stuff up for them. If they're your friends, your co-workers. And then turn them loose to play with it. Assure them that the very worst of them how to log out and log back in. Make sure they have a journaling file system. I will never own a computer again without one. Oh, wait, that means I'm stuck with these Linux type things pretty much. Um, but the problem with as many features, this is good and bad, is okay, let's say there's a thousand features, and I only use 120 of them, right? Everybody uses 50 of those features. The problem is that different people each use a different additional 20 or 100 of them. So we're trying to make everything for everyone. So we get feature bloat. The problem is which features do we take out without cutting off 5% of the users or 1%? I can argue that one from either direction. But again, back to the training side, getting somebody up to speed on a Linux desktop to begin with means you have to teach them how to get on the internet, means that whatever they're using, you have to do it. I'm showing you that using these little utilities, it's pretty silly simple, right? Start ETH, you know, that would do it. We didn't start it now because we don't have anything plugged in. It's not going to happen. But, you know, we can go through. I forgot that I stopped it there. So it's going to search around before it uh, goes away. I'm going to show you something else that's the only advanced thing that I teach people do. Oh, okay, it didn't need it. Right, it's not responding. Why is it not responding? Because we don't have any internet. They want to use this thing in any case, because they like to produce documents. People do like to write resumes. My stepdaughter, Alicia, with no training whatsoever on a computer I gave her that ran Linux, in that case, Mandrake, has managed to use open office and no training and a printer that she configures herself, a little over the phone talks from me, a thousand miles away, to get a better job. Not much better. Alicia did drop out of high school. She did get into the uh, hip hop lifestyle heavily. You know, and the boyfriend uh, didn't marry her despite having his children. And uh, he did go to jail on drug charges. But um, Alicia did, you know, I gave her a computer. And she found she got even a better boyfriend because she learned how to use various. <laughs> I gave her a computer and, and access to a, a, you know, a $9 account on her phone line. 
and she's done well. I didn't teach her a thing. I just gave her the same application you see here. And she's kind of the prototype West Baltimore, you know, if you've seen the uh, show Homicide, Life on the Streets, or Wired, or The Corner, any of those. Um, she lives where those are shot. And someplace where it's easy to get shot. And I used to um, um, do crime reporting often in that area. But she can use these things. The big thing that she learned from me and from watching Friends is that it's easy. You just got to keep reminding people that it's easy. And it is. And here's the thing. Windows is easy, right? We all agree Windows is easy? Huh? Except you. Well, that's because you look like... He looks like Pat McGovern, who uh, runs... First Ford's net. Not separated far enough, obviously. <laughs> but, um, other than those two, seriously, Windows, most people think it's easy. It's really not any easier or any harder than basic Linux. Not getting into complicated configurations, but just put it on your computer and use it to do stuff. It's just that. Let me see. Uh, Mr. Rosen, you've used Windows, right? And for how long have you used it? Since DOS. So you've been using Windows for like 15, 20 years. I so one would assume you have it pretty much figured out, including little workarounds for all the silly problems, right? Very cool. See, and it only took them 20 years. Now, yes, three years ago, no. A year and a half ago. A year and a half ago is when I believe, approximately, is when Linux got to the point where you could pretty much give a normal, pretty intelligent human being a CD and some basic instructions and say, see ya, and they could do it. Now. Here's the trick. You've got to learn different tricks. None of them are hard. In fact, most of them are really simple. It's just a new set of tricks. There's a guy named Driver, and a uh, real name, uh, Mark Driver, and he's a vice president of, um, oh, what's, what's that huge consulting and analysis firm? He's going to fly away. He does, doesn't like being here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Mr. Driver, and I'm trying to remember the, the giant, the biggest consulting firm. I was hearing him in Orlando. He was saying that the way to put Linux into a company is to start in a new division. He says if they haven't had computers, there's no migration cost. The second thing that's a psychological trick that I have been told both by two guys at Ace Technology Group in Philadelphia and by Gideon Rahm, who um, founded Symbio Corporation, Symbio Technology up in New York, and they arrived at this conclusion independently. They don't really say Linux much to their users. They just say, well, the new system will be ready one day. They don't tell them what it is. They don't ask. All they know is it's a new system, and they have to learn it. It could be Longhorn, it could be Shorthorn. There are many obstacles. It's gotten really moronically simple, if you know which one. I'm going to say this again. The easiest ones are Xandros, Nepus, and Linspire. I no, they don't. Really? They can't just click on you know, do it automatically? No. No, why do they need to know that? Why? Why? Uh-huh. 
because some people are not brand new users. Well, actually, in this case, and using cue parse head, you know, the uh, way it says, is it says, automatic partitioning, recommended. Advanced users, custom partition. So, you know, people are getting aware of that. You're right. A lot of typing weird stuff. Yeah. Susan, yeah. This is called Mepis, M-E-P-I-S. I don't know, you go to the bookstore, buy this book, which I wrote, and I got $2.25 for royalties. If y'all buy it, I'll get so much in royalties, it'll pay for one supper. <laughs> well, you can still download Mepis off the internet. And you can also run it as a live CD. That is, you don't have to install it. And you're finding this is the mod thing now. That is, you can just plug it in your CD drive, and it'll run from the CD. You may have to change your BIOS. Things have gotten set. You, you bought a very expensive version. Well, what, the, what we're finding now, well, yeah, there's very, No, 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 no. I know, but... Is there a Linux users group here? Is, th is there a Linux users group here? Anybody else know, is there one? I know there is. This is not North Korea, so there's a Linux users group. I've found Linux users groups in every US United States state and in every country except North Korea is the only place that I haven't been able to find one. So there's two ways. Yeah, this was books. There's a lot of books. This is the one I wrote, so it's the best. Um, <laughs> Mad Dog will say the one he wrote about Flores. But it's okay, we're good friends. Uh, you know what I mean, though. See, but I have more pictures. I, I, I took more pictures because I wrote this over half pictures and videos. It's not a joke. But either that or the Linux users group. You know what I mean? Which is usually free, and virtually every one I've ever seen, and including, I'm sure, the one here, has an email list where you can get on and ask questions. There's also a lot of documentation like Mepis you can get on as a free forum, and there's all the instructions in one form or another there. 
Plus, you can type in in the forum and just, you know, whatever, call it partition. If you want to learn about partition, partition, click. You get a bunch of messages and you can read them because most of us, okay, him, a couple other people, maybe you, are real smart, but most of us don't ask very original questions. The problems we've had, other people have had. What I'm saying is, is you, you need like almost a little handbook of where to go. But even so, yeah, you're right. It's easier with the book or the packaged version or with the help of the uh, user group. I have both here. Not a problem. I, I think you're making, man, I think you're trying to bring up a lot of problems that I've never had. I just clicked on the little thing, I just clicked the CD in the thing, and it's... Yeah, well, or uh, the download version, which is the same thing as on the CD. I'm saying that most, I, I say again, the, there have been some Linux distributions that have worked, and the new Mandrake is very good. The new SUSE is maybe a little tedious, because they're trying to simplify it from a commercial big time distribution for desktop users, but there's several out there. Right? I'm like, it's like I said, uh, uh, Nopix from the, just to slap it in the CD, that it's a little harder to install, but if you got Zandros, if you got Linspire, if you got Mepis, I chose Mepis because it's the freest one. It's the one that you can download and then just use with no problem. You can download other software, no longer needing a, um, um, command line. Has anybody seen Synaptic recently? The latest version? Man, that's gotten good. You can also, get, what I'm saying is, this stuff has gotten real simple. You should go to the right thing. And I just gave you three names of distributions that will do all the stuff you're talking about, including set up the partitions for Windows, for Linux. This computer does have Windows XP Pro on it. Because once in a while, and I review software, and plus I'm writing a book called Point and Click Firefox, it's probably going to be bought 90% by Windows users. Not true. No, I'm just telling. I'm sorry. It is not. It kind of is. Um, KDE is far and away the most popular. Just far and away, used by more people in the world. Craig, who can tell me what the most popular Linux distribution in the world is? No. No. Mandrake. Mandrake has been put on more computers than any other, because Mandrake is such a free download company, um, and this stuff is so easily available. And of course, Fedora is up there. Uh, Mephis is actually a distro watch running neck and neck with Mandrake and Fedora for number one now. Debian is, of course, the king of free, and I'm going to show you why Debian is getting good, and everything else is just um, tagging along. I do like Debian and its variants for a lot of reasons, including none of that dependency stuff that you're new users. You don't know what that is. And if you use these packaged Debian-derived distributions, you'll never know, and you won't care. I'm trying to stay away from that. I'm saying, and in this, the basic, simply Mephis version in this book that you can download, there's no program choices. It uses Mozilla as the web browser, period. The next version will have Firefox, and we had to have this thing in to print us all. Firefox is not quite. It uses Mozilla as the email. It has Copeat as your one and only 
instant messaging and IRC thing. His co-pete will be every one of them, right? I think, that, I think though, that with a philosophy I'm trying to get is start the user with no choices. What we want to do, I say again, is get the new user going. They need to do the email to put out the resume. They need to look at the web pages. They need to do basic things. Maybe if they like telephony, we do Skype. They want to be able to do certain basic things. Get them going doing that. Choose the easiest software to do it. Not the best, the most elegant, the slickest. Don't use XChat. XChat confuses a lot of people who've never done IRC or um, instant messaging before. Game is fine. I like XChat. XChat is for guys like me who are on six different networks at a time and 14 channels because they're using his work tools. This is, again, the thinking like a new user thing. You're saying, yeah, there's all these choices. I'm saying that's nice. But when you have somebody who has no experience with Linux, you want to help them say, this is how you can do this. Here, here's a way to do it. This is your word processor. This is how you make HTML. This is how you do fill in the function there. You preset stuff like Flash. Yeah, they're going to want Flash. Don't give them a lecture about how Flash is evil. People really don't want to hear that. You have to be a little bit flexible. Okay, the new is about to strike me. Um, most people are really not willing to compromise their internet and computing experience. You have to give them, and this is built in M player as a Mozilla plugin already. So I can watch DVDs, including commercial, you know, DVDs and Windows media files, just out of the box. I can do that. People do want that. We're seeing this move, and that's why, again, I said I, I gave you three distribution choices that are full up experiences, and then this is the new baby. This is Synaptic. This is apt get for people who don't like command lines. Apt get, this iteration is less than four months old. This is what we were using before that for Mepis, and that is K package, which I haven't used for a while. And in just a second, I'll explain something to you again about why you shouldn't overly customize your distribution. Uh, it's so hard to see from here. Maybe I shift them. And what? What do you mean? No, it's a bug in this Toshiba. They will, this will be fixed when I get, it, it, it would be fixed if my wife hadn't been using my little ThinkPad and I brought that, we wouldn't be having it. This is, this is not a Memphis problem, it's, it's a well-known problem with a particular run of Toshiba satellite 1410 that they wouldn't warranty. Uh, so Memphis cannot fix that, Sandoz cannot fix that, and Windows can't fix it either. It's just, it, it's, it's a video card bug. Why, I don't know. But this is the, um, what we were using for a good while, K package rewritten to use app set. Now, once again, ma'am, here's the whole point of this. You don't need to know how any of this works. You don't have to worry about the partitioning. It's really gotten to be automatic. You shouldn't have to. You should maybe, at the very most, read the book, get the help from one of these smart people. That's where I started out. Or you do something like that. Well, you can now. See, or you just told me you could, right? You see what I'm saying? But now passing it on, saying the things that you went through and that I went through at first, that's over. The thing now is you have to remind people it is just really simple tricks. The problem is we have to learn those simple tricks because too many of us have gotten used to doing things the tedious way instead of just focusing, focusing on the simplicity.
same thing except no money. That's called app get, and that's I'm going to say this Lynch buyer is very easy. I object to some of the lack of security in it. I do not mind going through the extra work of typing in a root password before I download software. And that's what I was about to say about getting too far out. The open source stuff, as you've been hearing from other speakers here, if you were not already aware of this, many things advance rapidly. Case in point, Jandrus. Like Jandrus, like Rick Berenstein, who's the uh, CEO, great deal, met him years ago. And uh, Willie Rosenblum, who's our partner in uh, Global Ventures and all that, great guys. Very concerned. He really got into Linux because uh, really spent a lot of time in Africa doing um, NGO aid stuff, and um, that's why they got into it. And they're not poor men. They've been plugged millions of personal money into it. Then they spent. They bought Corel's Linux, and they had Ming Kuhn start to write a whole new file manager. They didn't like the file manager, the old Conqueror. And they didn't like Midnight Commander and the other ones that you saw used in Gnome. So this Ming Kuhn wrote a custom one. And it's not bad. So here's the problem. While Ming Kuhn and about six other guys working for Xandros were writing that file manager, the KDE one caught up with them and passed them. That's the point I was leading to with Synaptic. You're talking about click and run warehouse and all that good one click stuff? Wait a minute. That's what I have right here, except I have to put in my password, my root password first. After that, remember, I'm not on the internet now. But if I wanted whatever, I can look here, I can see what this is. Oh, look, three dimensional desktop switcher, blah, 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 it's OpenGL. Okay, I want to try that. So I click here. Okay, mark for installation. Okay, mark for installation, see? And then I did apply, and it would be everything you're talking about. It downloads it and installs it. It handles all dependencies automatically. I don't have to do anything except maybe go get some more coffee if I'm on a slow connection. And come back. Oh, what if I want to uninstall it? Well, it would be installed, and I click uninstall. And it would uninstall it. And it would not uninstall any dependencies that were being used by other programs. That's what I'm saying. It's gotten there. But so many of us still have our heads in the old stuff that we don't keep up on the latest advances in user silly usability. We need to actually look at that as a separate class of Linux, as end user Linux, and really keep up on it separately if we're teaching people or learning ourselves how to use it. That's all I really have to say. I'm happy to answer questions about anything, whether it's user Linux, flash dot, or physics. I have three children, three stepchildren, and seven grandchildren, so I have been peppered with every kind of question there is. Say what? Many people, including readers who submit them, mostly whoever is, there are several rules for working on Flashdot, one of which is if you are too drunk to remember your login, you should not work. Sometimes I think the polls are made up by the person who is closest to that line. It depends. Why? Submit one and find out. I don't know. Other people will tell you they're terrible. It depends. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys a secret about Flashdot. I just want to make sure that this stays in this room. You can't share this with anybody. And I want You never know. There could be somebody from the Department of Homeland Security lurking underneath nowadays. Oh, OK. That's cool. From masquerading as dentist. Great disguise. Anyway, the secret of Flashdot is the people who actually work on Flashdot take it less seriously than anyone else. 
It was never intended to be a serious news source. It was always intended to be sort of a dippy, fun kind of gathering place for people with a skewed sense of humor, a slightly geeky outlook, and an enjoyment of Star Wars, you might say. It is not competing with the New York Times. And who wants to ask me the secret of Flash Stop success? Go ahead, ask me. Bad spelling and incompetence. No, really. I, you, yes, I know. You think that's a joke. And you're right, it is a joke, but it's also true. And here's why it's true. Back in the good old days, people who wanted to post stuff on the web and engage in debate had a choice basically between places like the New York Times, Bulletin Boards, and the Well. I was on both of those. And I will tell you that in both places, your grammar had better be real, real, real good. And your spelling, too. If you pronounce lose or you spell lose, L-O-O-S-E, people thought you were an idiot. And as we know, a large number of programmers, especially those who read Flash Stop, do, do spell lose, L-O-O-S-E. It's the most common spelling mistake. And many have no idea what an apostrophe is for and just sprinkle the suckers in randomly. Now, what if people who were not especially gifted in the English language gifted enough, that is, to post, and notice I used a semicolon verbally just now. That is cool. Um, you couldn't use semicolons verbally, let alone in writing, who therefore could not post confidently on the New York Times forums or on the well or other highbrow places. What if people who perhaps had some technical expertise to share but weren't, as Rob Mulder called himself once, not really an English guy, Gave him a place. See, if, if Malda screws up, you could screw up too, right? So you felt comfortable. You could say, oh yeah, says you. And so people have. Now, actually, the average level of spelling and grammar has improved hugely on Flash Dot. Uh, by the way, so you know, the date that Flash Dot was determined to officially suck. Now, this is our corporate history, is the day that Rob Malda registered Flash Dot and stopped calling it Chips and Dips. We've, um, we've, we've had many different discussions about, and people say, you know, Flash Dot used to be great, but now it sucks. And uh, um, we traced it back, and the first email that said that came in two days after <laughs> it was registered as Flash Dot. So we've decided that it historically, Flash Dot has always sucked. Okay, it's always had bad people, it's always had bad posters. It, it didn't used to have moderation because it didn't need it. I remember the first article that I wrote that was picked up by Flash Dot. And, um, and by the way, I was, I was writing at the time for uh, Time Digital, another small publishing company that does some online stuff. You ever, you ever heard of them? Published some magazines in New York, then they got into the uh, ISP business with a company called AOL or something. You know, AOL runs Linux. Doesn't let you use Linux, but they use it. Um, but in any case, I uh, wrote that piece and uh, it got picked up on Flash Dot, and I think it produced 50 or 100 extra page views. It was a day when Flash Dot had no readers. Really? You didn't know that, did you? Uh, you did. Had none. I'm uh, user number 357, and uh, that's only because I delayed two days. I was uh, one of the first core of volunteer moderators when the comments started to get out of hand. And that was before Andover bought Flash Dot, because sort of in the intervening time there, I'd gone to work for for this. Uh, small company, Andover News Network, and at a meeting, true fact for you, not a secret, but not a well-known story, I'd driven up to Boston from where I lived then in, in near Baltimore, and we were um, in a meeting, and Bruce Twickler, who was the president of Andover, said to Kurt Gray, and myself, Kurt Gray being a Pearl programmer, said, you know, you guys read that flash dot plate a lot. And it's a lot of Linux stuff. Can we start a Linux site or one of those discussion sites? He said, well, you could, but why don't you just buy Flash Dot, man? We just like it. 
And we said, okay. We went on and said, bye, Flacco. I'm not kidding. It was a real meeting. I was there. And um, Andover did end up buying Flash Shot. And some people say that the um, day Flash Shot started the truck was the day Andover bought it. Possibly. And I ended up being the designated Andover guy on Flash Shot, which was sort of, you know, like inevitable. I was already posting on Flash Shot and knew everybody, you know, kind of thing, and I was there. And none of their management people that they had got along with uh, Rob Mulder and Jeff Bates at that point. They thought they were flaming lunatics. Okay, they are. Mm -hmm. Whom? Oh, man, I don't remember. Michael Savage? Some ultra conservative radio commentator mentioned it. I have no idea. I didn't know. I, I didn't know this until just now. Oh, are, are we are we liberal bad people? Are we part of the Jewish controlled media elite? So am I. I mean, that's why I was asking. I wanted to know. You know, we we still have to figure out. Just so you know, some of us are still trying to figure out. We know that. Some of us got the media and some got the banks. The guys at the bank seem to have all the money. And we're still trying to figure out who made this decision. I'm obviously kidding. But uh, um, Flashdot is not particularly... Uh, politically, Flashdot has um, people who work on it who range from... Um, well, I'll give you our two extremes of both programmers who post on the site sometimes. One of them is a... He is so leftist. He's a vegan. He's a gay vegan... Um, rabbit rescue animal rights activist uh, with hair this long who drives a Mazda Miata. More liberal than this you do not get. Um, he thinks that Bush should be taken out and tried for treason. The guy he works with most closely went to a, um, an evangelical college in Riverside, California. He's a believing Christian who thinks that Bush, despite being a leftist, is not a bad president. Got me. They they argue all day long while things compile, and they're best friends. We have a people say Flashdot has this or that political view. The answer is is we've got eight people who have open posting privileges on Flashdot. You know, as far as stories, and the political views are divergent. I'd say we all believe vaguely in some sort of generic freedom, and we generally think, you know, open source software is better than closed source software or something. Um, but we don't even all share the same taste in music or movies. And um, guitar skills and such vary heavily as well. We, we do have a higher percentage. Our, our other choice, actually our best musician, in case you want to have a fact rate as far as we know, at this point, it's Chris Kleinsberger who runs OSTG's IT Manager's Journal website. Although we are going to get Mr. McGovern there together with Chris, and we're going to have the great corporate playoff one day. You know he runs source boards, right? It's true, because when people, people were coming up to me after the first day of this shindig open, they said, how come floor sports is slow this morning? Don't ask me that thing. Any other questions or should we go to lunch? I'd say this is good to go for lunch. Thank you. You've been a wonderful audience. You're, you're far better at audiencing than I am at speaking. I love journaling file systems. I can just turn it off.
I have to put that back on the table in there because they're raffling that, I think, or something. It's not a bit of I wrote that for a larger site. I have friends who want to give Linux to family and stuff, they just don't want to be bothered. Exactly the point. I know, I lost the file. It's 